Hello and welcome back to my channel. I wanted to show you my workflow on how I normalize my images in Photoshop before I load it to Lightburn. Let me load this random image that I got from the web. Next is I'm going to crop it into a square using a marquee tool and then changing the style to fixed ratio. I'm going to drag it and try to center the face within the box. Next, we are going to crop the image. Let's go to the menu, click image, and then crop. Now we are going to change the image size and resolution. Clicking the image in the menu and then image size, I'm going to use the size of a 4x4 white tile. Changing the units to millimeters and typing 100 for both width and height. Next is change the resolution to 500. Make sure that the resample checkbox is checked and hit OK. Now let's go to layers, duplicate the original layer just in case we make a mistake and do it again. So we will have two copies. One will be used for sharpness and one will be used for blur. The next step is create a new layer. After this, we are going to create five new layers using adjustment layer using this button here. First, we're going to create black and white layer. Second is brightness and contrast. Third is levels. Fourth is also levels. And the last layer is posterize. Now let's go to the layer we created earlier, which is layer one. Select marquee tool, change style to normal, and create a selection below occupying the whole width of the image like shown. Next is making sure that the foreground is really white and the background is really black. And then we will do a gradient tool. And after that, we will paint it from right to left, edge to edge. We are now going to our posterize layer and change the levels to 11. So now you will see these 11 shades of colors at the bottom of our image. This is identical to the gradient test that we did previously. Next is adjust the black and white layer to auto. Next, we will do the brightness and contrast layer to auto. And then we will do the first level to auto also. Now let's go to the second level layer and manually adjust the midtone. We are going to slide it to the left. If you look closely to the 11 shades of gray we have, and if you look at the fourth and third block from the right side, which is white, we need to make that fourth and third to be in the middle of the image. As you can see, that 1.87 value of the midtone put the line between the fourth and third block below her chin or in the middle of the image. Next, we are going to adjust the whites or the highlights since it made the image super bright and it made her face too white. I'm using my mouse and scrolling the middle button here. What I'm looking for is the white blob in her face to diminish. We don't want it to go away, just to leave some highlights in her face. This way, you can see where the line between the fourth and the third block fall. Maybe it will help you if you toggle rulers and create new vertical ruler and put it in the middle of the image. This way, you can see where the line between the fourth and third block fall. Another tool I use is the info bar. Go to Windows in the menu and select info, and then change this to grayscale. And when you select the eyedropper tool, your mouse pointer will tell you what the shades of gray you are pointing to. I wanted to make sure that her face does not have anything higher than 60 because 60 in my laser is too dark for a face. I feel like her face is still too dark. So I'm going to adjust the midtone again from levels to layer. Remember those gradient tests that we did in our new material video? Let me show you one of those tests. If we decided to use 50 MMS and 80 power as our settings, those first two or three blocks on the left are all black. This means that the first three blocks also in our image will all be black. Now we have the opportunity to disregard the first block or even the second block by changing the value of the shadow level like shown. 
We are now ready to export our image for Lightburn. But first, let's turn off our layer 1 and also turn off our posterize layer. Next, we are going to make our background copy to a smart layer. What this means is anything we do after this is not permanent and can be changed later. Next is we are going to do our sharpen tool. For now, we will play with these numbers. 300 for the amount, 5 for the radius, and 12 for threshold. The reason for this is so we can give more definition of the face and hair and to add needed sharpness that will help our engraving look better. Now we are ready to export to PNG and use the image in Lightburn. That's it. We are done normalizing our image. We can actually now use image R or anything that you want to use for detrain. In my case, I use Lightburn. I hope this video makes adjustment of your image more predictable. The automatic settings of Photoshop is very helpful and it makes the images normalize better. I believe other softwares have this too. I'm just not sure. So maybe you can use those softwares too with this workflow. Thank you for watching.